Welcome to Crypto Tutors. We are humanizing cryptocurrency and blockchain and are bringing the best trailblazers and success stories like Isaiah Jackson, Tanya Evans, Ian Bellina, Cleve Mesador, and Tinashe Nitaganga on the crypto couch. Click subscribe and the bell to be the first to watch the latest interviews every single week. So, you know, the infrastructure bill has has gotten a lot of attention. And also one thing I will say that is good about the infrastructure bill is that it's it's really putting crypto and blockchain into uh, the public discourse here in the U.S. And hopefully that's kind of igniting people's interest, their curiosity to want to go do their own due diligence. So for folks that are wanting to learn, you know, do you have any any resources, any 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 websites, books, whatever that that you would point them towards to just kind of get their heads around things? Yeah. Um, I mean, I would start with some very basic videos, which you'll find all over YouTube that really explain some of the oldest um, parts of the technology, obviously, Bitcoin and Ethereum, those sorts of things. Uh, I love the Coinbase Earn product because you learn about things and you get free crypto at the same time, which is great. So um, that's also really cool. They do have wait lists and things, but um, you know, I would just really start looking through some of those videos. I think people have put really good effort already into, again, why reinvent the wheel? It's, it's out there now um, that really help people understand. And then I think what you really have to do is think about what does this mean? I still don't understand what I'm going to do with it, right? That's what a lot of people say. So what, right? Um, but now if you think about how transactions work in the banking world and how transactions work on the internet and those sorts of things, maybe now there are some scenarios. So one of the things that got me very interested in Bitcoin is I was working at some merchants. I was working at PayPal. I was working at Amazon, as you mentioned. And um, we would obviously collect credit cards to be able to process transactions. And inevitably, people have their cards compromised, right? Yeah. They weren't necessarily compromised on Amazon or on PayPal, but they were compromised somewhere, right? Mm -hmm. And either physically or online. And then they were used to do bad things online. What, what I learned is that when somebody has your credit card number, they can charge your card, right? You don't... It's the merchant who's pulling the funds off of your card, right? They're charging your card and you have no say in that, right? That's right. just, it's happening behind the scenes. One of the things I loved about Bitcoin is that the user is pushing the funds rather than the funds being pulled. There's a fundamental difference in how transactions occur, right? You as the owner of that Bitcoin or whatever it might be, you either need to be logging into your account or you need to be you know, taking your private key if you have a hosted wallet you're logging in, if you're doing it yourself, and you're pushing that out to the recipient. The recipient is not taking it from you. <clears throat> and so from a fraud perspective, that is groundbreaking, right? Um, so I, I, that, that is one thing, that, one example of something that just got me very interested in space. Where do you see things going? You know, uh, there's, there's, I feel like eh, we're just scratching the surface. I know you've been in the industry for 10 years almost. Um, but even still, I feel as though we're still scratching the surface. So where do you think things are going? Right? Like, tell us a little bit about what your crystal ball beholds. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think that the, the application layer is just starting to take some shape right? This, this whole question of what are we going to do with these things, right? And I think that the average person doesn't really understand or, or, or needs to understand really some of this uh, behind the scenes sort of fundamental changes that will happen over time with respect to certain, you know, ways in which um, transactions occur. And so that's starting to happen. Uh, and as that happens, I think, um, you know, we're going to see more excitement um, continuing to grow, right, over things that are happening in the space. And um, you're going to probably see classes in college on crypto and, you know, those sorts of things also 
coming into play. Um, I think some of that has started, but yep. um, I think it's just going to become part of an everyday, you know, behind the scenes thing. Now, nobody understands how the banking system works, but they go to the bank and they take the money out of the ATM. And they don't, we don't really need to know like how it all works. We just know how to use it. Right. You know that it does work and it's there when you need it to be there. And like, that's what you want, right? As a consumer. As a woman, Martine, you know, uh, an industry where, you know, women, people of color, et cetera, are grossly underrepresented, you know, y- you being a pioneer, what words of wisdom can you share with people that look like you and I that are curious, but maybe afraid to, to dive in either from an employment perspective or even from an investing perspective, what words of wisdom would, would you share with them to get them excited? Yeah, I would say, you know, let them underestimate you and use it to your advantage. Um, so I like to play poker. I don't do it often. I don't spend a lot of money, but I like to play. I think it's fun. And if I go to, to Vegas and I sit at a poker table, most of the people at the table are not going to look like me and they're going to think I don't know what I'm doing. And I will sit there through my bad hands and I will not bet I'll fold. I'll, you know, just wait and see. And then I'll get that one really good hand and I will bet. And when I win, I will get up and walk away from the table with my winnings. And I would say, you know, you got to figure out when enough is enough, but, um, do the same thing here, right? Don't be afraid to get involved. Just go for it. Um, diversity makes companies so much better. This has been studied, right? Um, and so know that you're bringing something to the table that probably does not exist already. You know, take that chance, take that leap of faith, know that you have worth and value to offer and don't let anyone else, don't let anyone's opinion of you diminish you and what you have to bring to the table. You know, when you look at Martine's uh, background, you'll see that she uh, serves as an advisor on a number of uh, organizations that, as I mentioned, Dapper Labs, um, Elliptic and so forth. And, And you can see why. Uh, Martine, I just want to say thank you for all of the women out there who, you know, might be considering entering the world of crypto and blockchain, but but are afraid. You know, thank you for showing us the way. Thank you for being a maverick. Thank you for, um, you know, helping to shape and mold the industry. Thank you so much for your time today, Martine. It's such an honor and a pleasure. Personally, I feel like this is one of my most, um, you know, awesome days in, in my crypto journey. I'm super grateful to have had you. I'm sure our audience is. You'll see in the comments below how, you know, excited they were if they didn't know about you to be introduced to you. We'll make sure that folks, you know, uh, can reach out on LinkedIn if they have something of, of, you know, value, something interesting. You know, Martine is an innovator and a futurist, so don't waste our time with anything but. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you so much for having me and for all of the kind words. We're excited to have you and we will have you back if you will uh, honor us again with your presence. Okay, sounds great. Want to learn more? Visit CryptoTutors.com.